Welcome to my Dax Tajero, my AC Cobra replica at the National Kit Car Show. So last year this got great feedback because it's such a unique show this, full of kit cars and replicas. Today it's a bit drizzly, but us Brits love a bit of water, don't we? So even though I showered today, Chloe didn't. She's a stinky girl, so she's going to get a shower anyway. And we are following an AC Ace replica. Chloe's expression right now is hilarious. <laughs> oh wow, F40 replicas, two cars behind. Oh, it's behind. Why is there a 5 Series in the way? Fantastic, it's here again. <laughs> oh yeah, it's £15. Oh, it's only £5 for me because I'm driving. Oh. That means we have beer money left over. <laughs> oh, I... I, I <laughs> I'm going to pull over and wait for the F40. You can see it behind us now. It's the Pontiac Fiero. That's the highlight. kit cars and replicas they're just good fun to look at trying to work out what it's meant to replicate what it once was there you go concession two diablos oh look at the metro that's oh cool my God. that's where i parked last year <laughs> it doesn't exist so we have found the uk cobra club which has a fantastic turnout of three <laughs> i've parked in the middle this time i decided to park with the cobras i was going to park in a space over there but then i realized there's smoke from that westfield would just go all over the car so i'm in the middle in my dax here we have an ak 427 similar kind of price to dax but actually quite different i always thought they were fairly similar kits but looking at them next to each other they do have their differences and then next to me we have a pilgrim which has a rover v8 so it sounded very different to mine when it came in and this is finished in red with no stripes which was my second choice for buying a cobra and then down there we have more cobras so i'm not sure what club they're part of they just kind of completely ignored our section and parked with each other. So a lot of these cars today will be based on other cars like Sierras and Jags. Mine's got an 88 Jaguar XJS chassis that's been shortened and narrowed to make the Cobra body fit by Dax. We've got another Cobra turning up, also heading down this way and not parking with me. And the first section is the Tribute Automotive Owners Club. These Cobras are built on BMW Z3s. You literally buy a Z3, take off its bodywork and put on the Tribute Cobra kit. They are the most affordable ways of getting into Cobra ownership. They all have the BMW straight six and this particular one has side pipes. And then here is the Cobra Replica Club as opposed to the UK Cobra Owners Club. Oh look, an MGB. That's not a kit car, but a lot of kit cars use MGBs as a platform. This club, which has one member so far, is the 289 register, so that's a narrow body cover that look more like AC Aces. In fact, this one is replicating an AC Ace. We did follow another one in, so there's probably another club somewhere in this vast area. But today I've brought along my convenient breakfast, the Y Food Happy Banana. So Y Food has sponsored this video, and this is part of the new Y Food Dream Team bundle. Now this bundle contains six bottles of Happy banana and six bottles of chocolate and this bundle gets you 10% off so it would otherwise be £41.88 it makes it £37.68 but I have my discount code of ADAM10 that gets you an additional 10% off so that makes the Dream Team bundle with 12 drinks £33.92 for banana and chocolate flavours so these drinks can keep you full for between three to five hours and are the most convenient way of filling you up when you're on the go like I am at all these shows so click the link in the video description and use Adam 10 to get 10% off your order so there are all kinds of quirky cars that even I can't identify there's a parks up here like this one called a Rochdale Olympic take this section for example this is the Yago owners club they're replicas of Jeeps including this Franken Jeep which is a 
widened version of the lot. That sure is a bit of a Frankenstein's monster. This year, Westfield has quite a prominence. They've created a Westfield Avenue of various cars lined down to the end, and they have their own tent as well. But here is the section that a lot of you love to see. We've got Lamborghini replicas, starting off with two Lamborghini Diablos and then two Lamborghini Countaches, all with their doors flying high. I mean, take a look at this Diablo. If you've seen this in the street with its personalised number plate, you just think a Diablo drove by. And also, take a look at the Audi. The orange on the Audi kind of matches the orange on the Diablo replica. Even the interiors on, say, the Countaches are so like the original, probably because they're quite easy to replicate, because Lambo were quite handy with a bit of glue and wood back in the day too. And check out this, it's replicating a 250 GTO, but of course is a convertible. Thank you very much. Fantastic. MX250 based on a Mazda MX5. And now opposite we have the Porsche 356 Speedster replicas. Some of them are maybe more modernized than others, so this will have been based on a early Volkswagen Beetle. This one's more of a resto mod appearance with the wider wheels. Because rather than being based on a Beetle like the others, this one is a Porsche Boxster. Hmm, is this replicating a police car from the Detroit police? A Ford Taurus <laughs> and a camper van. Today there will be quite a few seven base cars replicating the original Lotus 7. And it seems one of the members decided to bring his Volkswagen Bora Ute along. That is fantastic. He has made a Ute out of his Volkswagen Bora. Built not bought indeed. Take a look at that. And whilst Ultima are pretty much a manufacturer in themselves, Ultima GTRs and Can-Am Spiders also turn up at the kit car show. That is quite an early Ultima, that one. That's rear spoiler, looking wonderful. And we also have an early Janetta parked up, looking for his stand, and loads of dogs everywhere. Last year I parked down this main strip. That's since been demolished, as we saw, but I think I was parked next to this very same Ferrari 250 short wheelbase replica based on a Z3. One massive telltale of these is obviously the short wheelbases were never convertibles, and obviously Z3s are. And further down, as we saw as we came in, we've got this Metro. This used to be a standard Rover Metro. It was white. It was front engined but now it has a V6 in the middle. So, oh, there's the Z3 250. Riding the revolutions, that is a three litre Ford Duratec with a turbocharger. Oh look, it's a BMW Z4 with a Supra body kit. So we've got a three wheeled car, we've got number six over here and then an Ultima section. So we've got Martini and Black next to each other with the bright yellow just beyond. This one without a spoiler. I believe the early Ultimas have this more curvaceous rear end and then the later ones has this flatter rear end. So that's another one of the early Ultimas without the spoiler on the back. We've got the Rothmans livery on the Ultima GTR here and then a later yellow example next door. And beyond the Ultimas we have an orange Cobra with a hardtop which begins a GT40 section so there's three of those parked with each other, there's a Golf liveried one at the end and in this little pen this is where a lot of the Ferrari replicas were based last year but I think we've got more sections so this is the DNA Owners Club. This Ferrari California is based on a Mercedes SL we've got a couple of MR2s in the shape of Ferrari 430 Spiders and then we have a Ferrari 250 California which would be worth about 25 to 30 million pounds but this one is a BMW Z3 and not the only one that is here today but it makes more sense making a California out of a Z3 because California spiders have convertible roofs as opposed to the short wheelbase which don't the back ends are a little bit larger than the originals but from the front they look genuine and twin with a Nardi Torino steering wheel it looks beautiful inside as well so we've somehow found the vortex section maybe something to do with the high-vis paintwork on this one we've got the vortex phantom coupes which look stunning in my opinion there's three of them i think there were two last year i like the cherry red one on the end they have subtle similarities and differences to each other i think they've got v6s inside but a lot of the crowd are heading over to this lifted mini on a suzuki platform maybe something like a jimny or similar it looks like it has indeed been off-roading at some point in its life with side pipes as well and a roof rack on top and then we have this which is called a Tiki, I think T-I-C-I -I is perhaps its name, it's a two-seater, looks like if you brake really hard it will roll on itself. Um, it's probably also based on a mini platform, that is a mini steering wheel, but has been shortened quite some bit. That is the weirdest car 
I, I, I feel bad calling it a car. It must be mid-engine somewhere underneath there, or rear engine, because the footwell is literally, that is your footwell. Your feet are the crumple zones. We have the Quantum Owners Club. These are based on Ford Fiestas and have Ford running gear as well. And this one has pop-up headlights delete. Chloe's drawn to someone's little house. They've even gone for the effort of putting flowers out. They've got the flower pot that's probably on the back of this Quantum, which has got Fiesta rear lights. Oh look, a Lotus Elan and a Strassos and an Elise. So that will be a Strassos replica. Again, most Strassoses you see these days on the roads tend to be replicas and there are a few here today. And another one of my favourite sections, we have the Marcos section. A lot of borrowed parts from Ford and various other manufacturers. And further on, we have a few more seven base cars. And then this, which is a 2019 car, it's a bit of an enigma. I think what it is, is a modern take on the kind of Austin Healey 3000 replicas with micro rear lights and BMW Mini front lights. And these cars are not Morgans. These are Hawks. So these are replicas of Morgans. I particularly like the yellow one. Donuts. They are beyond a Ferrari 250 short wheelbase replica. This one does have a hardtop and Chloe's wandered over to the donuts. And another car that you may not realize to be replicated, here we have a Jaguar E-Type replica. So a bit like my car, they often use Jaguar XJS or XJ6 running gear and then build a slightly wider than original shell on top of them to replicate the Series 1 Jaguar E-Type. Here's another fun section. We've got the beach buggy, so a collection of dunes and Mayer's Manxes, which is the more common one. This one's got some kind of green tartan. It's like he's run over a Scottish person and the kilt's just blowing in the wind up the front of it. He's got a mascot on the dashboard. And then this one almost reminds me of a Porsche 550 Spider in the style of it, in the headlights, but it is a beach buggy. And opposite the buggy section, we have this Shelsley T2, a very curvaceous car parked on its own. Next to a Series 2 Lotus Elise, it's got Ford Mondeo rear lights. And here we have a replica Costco and replica houses with replica grass. Oh no, someone's stolen all their nuts and bolts and the car's fallen apart. But inside the main hall, we've got one of the favourites from last year, a Porsche 911 replica. There's two of them, both based on Boxsters. So this, what looks to be a 991 GT3 RS, is actually a Porsche Boxster. Do you know what that is? What? Or was? Um, it's an MX-5. I was about to say MX-5. <laughs> you don't need your MX-5 anymore. Look, you can recycle it and turn it into a Tipo 184 Alfa Romeo. So, here you go, MX-5 engine. Yeah, it's got oh my God, fake yeah. pipes on the manifold. <laughs> it's meant to be a straight eight, but it's only a straight four. Now recently we went out in a Dutton Reef, which is an amphibious car based on a Ford Fiesta. Dutton also do the Dutton Surf, which is behind us here. That's another amphibious car. So this one is based on a Suzuki Jimny. I think this was the first one they made, and then they made the Fiesta Mark VII ones afterwards. And here we have Dax. So they're the people who make My Cobra. They also make a seven base car. This is the Dax Rush. And Dax also make a Shelby Daytona Coupe. Opposite Dax are Hawk, who make Cobra 289 kits, as well as Alancia Strassos replicas. And then AK with their Cobras and their Jaguar XK. SS replica which looks absolutely stunning as well as a GT40 that they do as well. Further down we've got the XCS Cobras and here is an Aston Martin DBR1 replica which is again based on a Mazda MX-5. Now I wish the front end of this wasn't up because it is called a Skoduki. My camera's struggling to focus on it because it's confused as well as you are. It's got a Skoda front end but as you can see further down it is a pickup and has two four-cylinder engines. So that was the fascinating indoor area. There's still a lot more to look at, including some more supercar replicas. And in front of us, we have a lineup of Lancia Strassos's and a lineup of Lancia Strassos owners having their AGM. So we are now heading back to the Cobras, and I'm proud to say that more has turned up. You can see the lineup of colors in the distance, but. Over here is a section that I've been looking forward to showing you. We have even more Ferrari and Lambo replicas. You're gonna love these, because I saw them coming in. I haven't had a chance to look around them yet. Oh yes. There is another Ferrari F40 replica. There it is. Take a look at that next to a Daytona replica. So these are the Italian replicas. So Lambos and Ferraris. 
Oh my. This is a Ferrari F40 replica that I have not seen before, not even pictures of. It's a bit of a work in progress. He's got a piece of paper on the dashboard just to excuse it. It's not finished. It needs a bit done to it, but he has still brought it along to the show. It's a fascinating build. While some of them are Pontiac Fieros, this is a Toyota MR2. You can tell by the wheelbase and the roof line, it is a Mark II Toyota MR2 with the Ferrari F40 styled body. Come around the rear, the rear lights look almost genuine from Ferrari. It's a little bit narrower. It's got the large cannons on the rear, still has the MR2 engine that you can kind of see underneath the perspex. And then the white wheels replicating the Ferrari F40's own wheels as well. Split rims maybe, very deep dish on the rear. On the real Ferrari F40's, the whole rear clamshell would open up like that. So they've actually replicated the panel line there, even though it's just this bit that opens on this particular car. So that is not actually a join line at all, that is just part of the body to make it look like that's how it opens, but I believe it's just this panel here that opens to get to the middle engine. If you look further down the line you can see the Pontiac Fiera F40 that we've noticed before and you can compare the two in such a way. This one's got a more classic F40 look to it with the headlights and the pop-ups. I'm not sure if the pop-ups pop up, but I'd imagine it shares the same motors as the original MR2. But next door to the MR2 F40 replica we have this Ferrari Daytona Spider replica. This is a bit like my car in that it is based on Jaguar running gear. So it's a Jaguar XJ12 underneath and looks fairly good. It actually looks a little bit like a Corvette C4 at the back, that kind of sharp edge. But it also apparently has the V12 from Jaguar as well. So it's got a V12 like the Daytonas would do. And then a set of Marmite ANSA pipes. And neighboring the Ferrari Daytona replica, we have something that I've been looking forward to seeing. So Chloe's cousin, Rossa, has the Rossa Testarossa, and people think that his Testarossa is a replica, but no, it's a real Testarossa just without a roof. This is a Ferrari Testarossa replica. So straight away you'll notice it hasn't got the Testarossa style headlights. It's got these twin lights on the front, circular lights. So it's not trying to replicate it. It's just inspired by the classic 80s shape of the legendary Ferrari Testarossa. It's got more modern wheels as well. It's probably quite a modern build. Let's have a look. It doesn't say, but what it does tell me is it is also based on Jaguar XJS underneath and it's got a V12, Jaguar V12. So this has similar underpinnings again to my Cobra. It's a bit of a whooper apparently and it's got again more modern rear lights so it's not really trying to pretend that it is a Ferrari Testarossa because there's no Ferrari badging, there's different lights on the front and the rear and it's in grey as well. But I think as a standalone car, especially from this angle, I think it's pretty good looking. I like the rear end as well, the way it swoops over that rear arch and that large intake in the side as well. The square window lets it down a little bit in my opinion, but you've got that rear hatch showing the mid-mounted V12, apparently, according to its fact file. I can't actually see it. But the number plate is actually a 2010 reg, so this can't be any older than 2010. So it is a fairly recent build, built maybe within the last decade. And next door to the Testarossa replica we have the Ferrari F40 that we saw here last year and this is for sale for £25,000. So as we saw last time it's not quite as classic on the front end as maybe the Mr. 2 one over there is. It doesn't have the pop-ups, it's got more like Nissan 300ZX headlights and it's got that long front splitter on the front end. Come down the rear the spoiler is slightly different too. It almost resembles the F40 LM spoiler but then the rear end, I think, the width of it looks a bit more genuine. It's a shame the spoiler bends a little bit, but in general, it's a good looking car with the triple pipes on the rear. But neighboring the Pontiac F40, we have a Lamborghini Murcielago replica. Last year, I made a video with the Lamborghini, which was a Murcielago replica, again, based on a Toyota MR2 with a turbocharged two liter engine. I haven't yet worked out what this one is. I think it's got a fact file on it as well, so we can and find out. But this is finished in yellow, which looks stunning, especially next to the 355 replica. That's based on an MR2 as well. This is also for sale. How much? Yes. Well, you're about to say 30, so I'm guessing 35 grand. 
39. 39 grand, so almost 40 grand for a Lamborghini Murcielago replica. Murcielagos in general are rising in value. This is based on the Gen 1 Murcielago as opposed to the LP640, I think. <laughs> yes, it is. That's what it's trying to replicate. So a real one, maybe 200 grand. So at the fraction of a price, you could drive around in something just as good looking. Take a look at the rear. Some of the angles on these V12 Lamborghini replicas, they look legit. And all you need is a personalised number plate saying V12 and most people will believe you. And this one does have a V12. It's got a BMW V12 in the middle of the Lamborghini Murcielago replica. So next door we've got the Ferrari 355. I believe this to be another MR2. But this one does not have a convertible roof. So even though 355s did come as convertibles, they went to the effort to make a hard top for the MR2 as part of this 355 kit. And next to this MR2 is another MR2. This one has a Ferrari Dino body on it, which is a little bit narrow on the front, but from a lot of angles, again, looks genuine. It's got the Dino door handles, very fragile handles, those. And especially from the rear, that is a classically Ferrari Dino GT rear end, even with the 1972 number plate on the back. We've got even more to look at, and that, oh, that one, we'll look at this one first. So this is another Ferrari 250 short wheelbase replica, probably based on a BMW Z3, again, with a hard top rather than a convertible, because that's what the 250 short wheelbases were, they were hard tops. But next to the Z3 is my favourite one of the day, a Ferrari 550 replica in a bit of a GT1, GT2 Le Mans looking livery. That is fantastic. Look at the gills down the side of that. They are vents that do indeed vents. They're not replica vents, they're genuine vents. 20 inch wheels, Ferrari painted on the brake calipers. Those vents don't vent. Oh, those vents don't vent. Okay, those vents don't vent. These ones vent. This 550 GTS replica is also based on a Jaguar chassis, a Jaguar XK8. It has a V8 up front, 4.2 litres. I believe that to be Jaguar interior as well. There's quite a lot of Ferrari logo on the steering wheel. Come around the rear, we've got the 550 rear lights, a spoiler, quad pipes as well for the V8. Obviously, the original 550s were V12s, but that doesn't matter. So I'm not sure which one of the day is my favourite so far. I don't know if it's the 550 GTS, maybe the Testarossa, maybe one of the F4 maybe even the Mercy Lago or the Diablos and the Countach down there. But next to the 550, we have another Ferrari 250 California in that classic baby blue color. That is the color to go for, in my opinion. But this, once again, is a BMW Z3 with its straight six and is convertible because it is a 250 California Spider. And next door to that, is a Ferrari F430 Spider replica. This 430 Spider is again a Toyota MR2, the most famously known car to use to build replicas of. Actually, I was asked yesterday if my Cobra is an MR2, but no, MR2s are mid-engine, my Cobra's front engines. The front engine cars tend to be BMW Z3s or kind of Jag chassis, and mine obviously is the Jag chassis. So we've got MR2, BMW, Jag, BMW, MR2, MR2, Jag, Pontiac, Jag, Jag, MR2. So they were the Italian replicas, none of which were Italian. They were either British Jag, Japanese Toyota, or German BMW. So now we've got the GTM section with GTM Libras all on show in yellow and red. And there's a Mark 1 MX-5 about to drive past a car again that is often used to replicate other cars. Oh, and there goes the Murcielago replica with its BMW V12. And as a lot of them start to leave, take a look at this little buggy. It's left-hand drive, they've got a dog, and it is road legal. It looks like a mobility scooter that's leaving with the rest of the buggies. And our final section is here. We have a lineup of what look to be Porsche 911s, but these are Covens, these are 911 replicas. I'd imagine they're based on Volkswagen Beetles, as most are. We've even got a 964 replica, which I'm not sure I've ever seen. And then just down from the Porsche replicas we've got these Bertinis which are once again BMW Z3s and what on earth is that I've spotted I feel like what's his name the nature guy I've just spotted something that I don't even recognize in the distance David Attenborough. I've spotted it 
I was mid. Oh, he's going. He's going the other way. Where are you going? I want to look at you. I never found it. And on that terrible bond shell, it's time to end this episode. I'm sure that's not how I ended, but I hope you enjoyed that video from the Stonely Kit Car Show. Go follow me on Instagram for the updates and highlights and photos of these Misa I go to. My particular favourite was the Ferrari Testarossa, maybe. But let me know what yours was because there was so much variety here today, including this MK. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Click the bell when you subscribe to be notified for when my next one is. I'm off to a modified show tomorrow, so that should be a good one. But for now, thanks for watching. Chloe, there it is, there it is, there it is. I don't know what this is. I like the headlights. That is sleek. He's just been cruising around. I've caught him. I have succeeded. I like that.